Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to do a quick video. It's cold outside. I mean it went from like 65 wearing a t-shirt outside to uh, I think it's 41 or 40 right now with the wind blowing so it's like feeling like it's around 25 because it's pretty brutal out there. Uh, so I just thought I'd stay inside and do a video on some chainsaw bars, some carbon bars. Uh, as you can tell, I got my 170s out. I have two different types of bars. I have a cannon bar over on this one. I call it Baby Yoda because it's sporting a, uh, an eight inch dime tip cannon running a quarter pitch chain. And on this one, I call it the Grinch because I've had it the longest and it started acting up on me a little bit ago. And I was like, that's exactly what you're being right now. You're being a Grinch. Uh, but it's sporting the, uh, the steel, I guess, carbon kit bar. It's a 12 inch dime tip. Uh, just want to give you my thoughts on them. I've used the, the steel, I've used it for a little bit over a year now. Uh, and the Canon, I just got it maybe about two months ago, about a month ago, two months ago. Yeah, it's done quite a bit of carving already just with it. But we'll start off on a steel brand. I've seen a lot of people asking what type of bars to get and uh, where to find them, where to get them. For right, right now, for some reason, it's getting hard to find carving bars. Uh, I guess you can blame it on COVID and shipping and production and all that jazz, but I think there's just a bigger, a lot of people's getting into it, you know, which is awesome because the more people that get into it, you know, hopefully they'll start making things more available a whole lot easier. So that, that's just one way to look at it for me. Things will get cheaper, hopefully. <laughs> but anyways, let's talk about the steel real quick and then we'll jump into the cannon on my thoughts on that. Uh, a lot of people are having trouble, like I said, a lot of people are having trouble finding carving bars and things like that and which ones to go with. Either, right now, it's either you have to go uh, pretty much with a real cheap bar if you're going to find one or not be on back order or somehow get one on, you know, through the works if one comes in stock because they're flying out the doors right now. Everybody, everybody is staying out of stock on them, which is unfortunate, but uh, it makes sense. Uh, one thing that is kind of good you know, with the steel brand on their bars, a lot of times you can go into the dealership and order the carbon kit for their steel chainsaw. Why the other manufacturers like Echo hasn't figured that out yet, I don't know. It's ridiculous, Echo. Figure that out, why can't you offer that option? You should. I Make your own carbon bar, make it better. Anyways, my two cents. But you can go inside there, that's the good thing about steel, you can go there You'll have to explain to the dude behind the counter that like, hey, I want a carving bar for my chainsaw and they're gonna stare at you for a few minutes. They're gonna go ask two people if they have that. And then they're gonna go call somebody, their, their rep, and figure out what page it's on on the book. <laughs> That's just what's gonna happen. Cause they, most of the time wherever you live, they're not gonna know about it, but it's in their book. I assure you, it's in this accessories, accessories section and they can look up the part number or somebody may be able to put the part number down here on the comments of what the part number to that kid is. And that may help you out if you don't want to go through the hassle of trying to look up through a hundred different websites on what's compatible with your chainsaw, the chainsaw bar mounts and things like that. You can just go to a dealership and do that. I'm letting you know that information because I see people struggle with this a lot. And I hate to do that to people, but for some reason the information isn't out there readily available on a lot of sites to be able to tell people that you can go get a steel carbon bar. Now, with the steel carbon bar, it's uh, is it the best bar out there? I don't think so. I don't say, th say it's the best. I don't say it's the worst. Uh, but I don't think it's a bad bar for, for any means. I've still been using this one. I haven't burned it up yet. Uh, I've really given it a hard time. And it's been sticking around with me. I'm gonna bring it up to you, get it a little bit a close, a little closer shot. But I mean, it's got some wear and tear on it. You can tell down here, it's got wear on it. I got some marks on it where I put it on myself just to have a little bit of a gauge. You have the depth gauges here. I guess those would be considered depth gauges into your wood. Somebody else that uh, may know a little bit more than me, maybe I'll tell you. But it's held up fairly well, fairly well. I haven't had any big issues with it it's been uh doing its job like i said it's mounted on the ms 170. inside that kit comes with you can buy the kit from steel it has the uh, the clutch or the the, the convert the, the what am i trying to say the sprocket there we go 
as a sprocket that you can you can swap over because I believe it comes in a 3 8 low profile, uh, brand new MS170. I'll tell you right now, I got the bar right here. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a 3 8 P bar and chain that comes on it. It'll come either in a 14 or 16. I think they come in 16s now. But it'll come with a sprocket conversion. You can convert it over to port cor quarter pitch chain. And then, uh, which is just a clip to take it, take it on and off. No big deal there. And then, also comes with the chain. It'll come with the micro chain, something like that. It'll come with the specialized carving chain. Make sure you always get the specialized carving chain. Uh, don't, don't try to fiddle around and try to cut them. Sometimes you can if you're good at it, you know, cut the back halves of it. If you're getting a lot of chatter and jitteriness, that's what that's from. You didn't file off the back of your, uh, you didn't file off the back of your uh, cutter. So keep that in mind too. And then it'll come with the bar. Uh, they can most time put it on for you and then you're good to go. And you're ready to start carving, let things warm up, let everything kind of settle in, your chain and bar together because it may be tight. And then you're ready to go carving. You're done, you, no more guesswork. And that's the unfortunate thing is that, uh, you know, if you go with other bars, other routes, other manufacturers, which there's good ones out there, you know, there's a lot of good manufacturers on bars. You know, you really have to, you have to dig in, well, is this compatible with my chainsaw? Is this not? Uh, is this gonna work? You know, what gauge does it come in? Which chains run the best? It's not a lot, it's not very hard. You know, if you're running 50 gauge, run a 50 gauge chain and a 50 gauge bar and make sure you got the right the right sprocket on there. The right spur, spur or rim sprocket, whichever one. But that's the hardest part is finding those parts sometimes, whether you want the rim or spur. But I really enjoy the 12 inch. I think it's very versatile. We'll get back on track. I think it's very versatile. I think you can do a lot with it. Uh, I've done a lot with it. I mean, it just hasn't had, for, for it being a steel brand, the manufacturer's brand, it's done pretty well for me. I haven't, I don't really have any complaints. I do think it's a little bit softer metal than the Cannon Bar. But with that said, you know, as long as you don't sit there and overheat it and smoke it out, which I haven't smoked it out, I think I've only smoked it out once. And, but other than that, I haven't had any problems with it. It's been, it's been doing pretty decent. No, no complaints for as much torture as I put on it on my first year. And I've done a lot of silly things with it. So it's done well, it's done well. Keep them, keep them true, you know, file off the sides, try to keep them, watch out for the mushrooming at the tip, tip of your bars and you'll be good to go. You know, just keep it maintenance, maintenance on your bars. Next one we're gonna talk about is the Canon. Uh, now, the reason why I went ahead and got the Canon, bring it up here. I do have a Canon a, uh, quarter tip on my 501. I believe I have it in the 14. And let me tell you, that Canon has taken some abuse. It has taken some abuse and it keeps on going. It hasn't discolored. It hasn't, it's showing hardly zero mushrooming, mushrooming on the ends of the bar or any uh, peeling out or anything like that. It's been pretty low maintenance on my 501 bar. Right here. And that's in the 14, that's quarter, quarter tip. It runs quarter pitch as well. But, and that's why I really want, I was thinking, well, I'm gonna try to go with something else. So I went with another Canon on this 170 and I wanted to go with a different, you know, a different size chain, a different size bar. Give me a little bit more options. I want to tell you, I was a little nervous about going with the eight inch bar, but after using it for quite a while, I'm loving the eight inch bar on it. I mean, it can't do, it can't do everything, but if you're going to be used, doing a lot of smaller carvings that you need to be a little bit more close up or heck, even if your arms are just tired and you want to, you know, lock into yourself and, <laughs> you know, go, go T-Rex arm. You know, you can sit here and you can be right next to it, see exactly what you're doing. Uh, it's been a really good option. I've enjoyed it. Uh, I haven't had anything negative to say about it so far. I haven't burned anything up on it. It, it, it was a little bit get used, 
it took a little bit getting used to on being so short. I was thinking, man, I hope I don't get myself in trouble with it or, you know, nick a leg or an artery and wife finds me laying out there in the ground, you know, crying or whatever. But no, it's been, it's been decent. It's, uh, hasn't really been that big of a difference, like on use wise. It's just, I, I'm a little bit closer up to the carving. I'm able to see what I'm doing a little bit more and I'm able to be a little bit more nimble with what I'm doing. But there's things that, you know, it's very limited on its reach. I would give you that, that's a con. You're only going so far into the carving. There's goods and bads with it, you know. But for the most part on smaller stuff, it's been a lot of goods with going to the eight inch. I, I have no, you know, and it's very common for me to, if I'm on bigger carving, you know, I'll start off with my 12 and then swap over to my eight for like the furring and small details, things around the face things that I don't want the bigger, longer bar sitting there to tear up something. Sorry about that. But yeah, I just thought I'd tell you about them. Now I know there's a lot of different bars and we'll wrap this video up because it's, there's not much to really tell you, but I want to tell you my experiences with them. The steel brand I've enjoyed. It's worked hard for me. I beat it up. I think the metal's a little bit softer. I can tell that. I do think the metal is a little bit softer because it, does show way more deformity and wear on it versus my Canon. The Canon bars do seem to be uh, made from tougher, harder metal, harder steel, whatever the process is. The Canon seems to be just a little bit harder and showing less wear and showing, just showing less damage, you know, from time and use. That's just the best way to put it. But also, cannons were more expensive, so you got that that downgrade on them. But you know, you pay, get what you pay for. I guess I hate saying that. Yeah, you know, I want things cheap, and I want them to work good, like everybody else, I guess. All right, well, this that's it for this video. I just want to show you my two setups on what I've enjoyed, what my, my likes are and dislikes, how to find, you know, certain bars. Uh, I know I've said it before and you may have found them already, but the Saw Nuts website, they, you know, they don't give a lot of information on which exact uh, saws and bars, and they're just busy. I mean, they've, real, they've gotten busier and stuff like that, and sometimes things, busy people, it's hard to get questions out there. So I'm hopefully, hopefully if you have a 170, you're seeing for yourself that, and with the sprocket, this is a steel, uh, quarter pitch sprocket on this one that's running the the quarter pitch chain and I just put my Canon you can go to Canon's website they have a bar finder you can find your bar that will fit this and you can buy it somewhere I bought mine from saw nuts uh, my steel I bought it from the dealership they looked it up and they ordered it in for me I think the Canon took me a little bit because I got it about a month and a half ago the steel it took a couple weeks but even they've said that it's sporadic on their parts. The last time I spoke to them within the last month, you know, they, they don't know when they're getting certain things in. They, uh, you know, one of those things. All right, that's the end of this video. We can keep talking, but I think that's all you need to know. That's all you need to see right now. Well, y'all have a great day. Have a Merry Christmas. I'll show you a little side-by-side -side comparison. Yeah. That's the, the size difference in those bad boys. All right. All right. Y'all have a good day. We'll talk to you later. Bye.